Have you ever tried to connect to a really large data set, maybe through SQL, and found that creating the extract takes ages? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to kind of manage that performance. So let's get started right now. <laughs> All right, here we are for another video and it's really weird today because I'm actually filming during the day. I almost always film at like really late at night after work, after everything I've done. So it's really weird, weird filming something early in the morning, but that's all right. So um, this question comes from Swarup. Good day. And you know what else? I've noticed that a lot of, a lot more questions have been coming through on YouTube on problems you guys are having. Please keep those questions coming, no matter how big or small or simple you might think it might be, because chances are thousands of other people are also struggling with the same problem. So here's a question. Hi, Jed. Love your Tableau course on Udemy. Thanks. I had a query while refreshing the extract using SQL custom query. It takes a lot of time in hours to refresh. Can you please share any tips on how to reduce time? All right. So I've got a few things to consider just in terms of performance. So what you'll probably find now is like the, the progression I see people take is, you know, you start with an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and you start accumulating a bit more data and you're like, well, we need to store more. Then you end up with, you know, maybe a SQL uh, database or something like that and then you need to connect to it and then you can start building but then your data gets massive and massive you know in the millions it takes much longer to actually do the extract so you're probably wondering it's like well just don't do an extract just do it in live mode the problem with doing it in live mode is if you're prototyping like you're still coming up with your visualization every time you bring something in it takes a little bit longer to do the processing so i'm going to show you a few tricks that i do to kind of help me with the build mode in terms of actually reducing the time there are a few things you can do um, but nothing super crazy but anyway we'll go through it so the first one is to take a sample of your SQL, all right? So the idea being, if you have, what's all this, get rid of that. If you have, let's say, you know, a million rows in your data set, um, you know it's gonna take like, you know, half an hour or whatever it is to take the extract, and then you're gonna have to design in it. So one of the things I do is I take a sample of that one million, maybe I'll take 100,000 sample, 100,000 of those one million, and I'll build the visualization of that. The trick is to make sure you get a good, even sample. Right. So it's um, I heard I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson said that if you go to the beach or you go to the edge of the, the ocean and you get a cup and you go like this and you go, huh, there's no whales in the ocean. It's because you haven't taken a proper sample. So if you have a million rows, chances are in those systems, they've been sorted. So you don't want to just go give me the top 1000 or give me the top 10 because you might accidentally do a poor sampling. So what you want to do is randomize it first and then take a sample. All right, so here's how you can do it. And I've actually just finished testing this. This is the SQL for it. Now, if you're not super advanced in SQL, um, let me kind of show you an example, right? So I'm, I'm going to make up a table here. So we're going to go select, right? And the first step is just do the extraction. Don't worry about all these orders and where's, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to make up a table. So we're going to say um, name, age, date of birth, color, or hair color okay and then we're just going to go from customer okay we'll do it like this so it's a bit neater okay so this basically means there's a customer table and maybe we'll switch this to sql okay so it means there's a customer table with fields in it and these are the fields i want to pull out so if i run it it's going to give me a table with four columns and get, just gives me everything now let's say there is a million rows in this right? A million rows. That's a lot to bring to Tableau. So what we do is we can limit this. Now don't do this. If you go where row number is less than or equal to a thousand, right? And then take your sampling. What happens is it takes the, it has, it has an order of operation. So it's going to take the first 1000 out of your million and then randomize the first. So no matter how many times you randomize it, you're always randomizing the first 1000. So what you want to do instead is don't do that yet. What you want to do first is randomize it. So the command we use is dbms uh, underscore random dot value. That randomizes the entire 1 million that you have. And then you want to take a sample of that. So you want to do another query on top of it. So you just go select star from bracket. And I always like to put everything indented, you know, because it's a lot cleaner. I'll do it like that. 
So basically you're pulling from this query and then you want to do your where clause. So you go where row num less than equal to a thousand or a hundred thousand, whatever you want to do basically. So you're always taking a fresh sample. Now, why would you do this and how does it actually work? Well, the idea is this 100,000 is diverse enough that it represents the structure of the 1 million data set that you have, right? So it may not have every little thing, but it should have enough variation in it that when you're designing, you should be able to account for all the variations. Now, it's not always perfect. And depending on how big your data is, will determine what your best sample size is. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want it to be too large because too large, you might as well use the whole data set. Too small, you don't get enough variation. So what I suggest is run it for, let's say, 10%. Okay. Start building. Then refresh your data with a fresh 100,000 and then see what impact it had. What you'll find is if you randomize it a few times, like two or three times, and there's almost no change to the logic or the build in your Tableau, then you're probably right in saying this is a good sample. Once you've finished your build, then you simply delete this, delete this, and you open up the whole thing. So instead of every time you refresh, you're refreshing a million, you're doing 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. When you're finished with the build, open it up, get the whole million in your data set and you should be done, right? So that's kind of like the first tip on ways to reduce it. Uh, a few other things you can do, right, is to automatically publish to Tableau Online as a published data source. Now, if you don't know what a published data source is, I have videos on that. Um, if you can't find them or you're not sure you want to learn more about it, just uh, drop a comment saying, you know, can you explain published data sources a bit more? Um, because it does create a take a bit of understanding. What basically happens is, and let's, let's grab Microsoft Paint, okay? What happens is when you do a published data source, right, you do all your preparation, right, for the data uh, in whatever tool you like. Uh, I'm gonna be careful with my words here. Let's say you're using a data cleansing tool like Alteryx, right? Or something SAP-based or whatever. Um, there are some tools that can publish the data source data set directly to Tableau Online. So if this is your cloud, this is your Tableau Online, right? The data set has already been processed enough, right? And it's in a structure and a form that Tableau already likes and works well with, and it exists in the cloud. And what happens is when you take Tableau desktop, correct connect directly to the published data source the performance should be faster and at least in my experience that's another thing you can try another one is um, not so much sql but more to do with excel and csv i've found that csvs perform way faster than excel so if you're having problems with excel try converting it to csv first and then doing that and the last one which is kind of like similar to the second one was use some sort of etl tool so etl stands for extract transform and load i'm not going to do a whole thing on it basically it lets you do all your pre-processing and data management and then making it available somewhere so you'll have a lot of like sap based systems that do that um what else there's heaps of them basically there's heaps of tools um, i'm not an expert in that so i'm probably not the best person to ask uh typically i've seen it in larger companies where they have massive it groups and divisions and yeah so those are some tips on how to manage your performance if you're still having issues or it's not quite what you were thinking or you know the question you had originally please let me know in the comments and i'll do another video on that but until next time have a good day and